Hello, and welcome to today's show, Legacy Living, Make Your Life Count. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria, Gloria Burgess, international leadership expert and trusted advisor. Welcome to Legacy Living, Make Your Life Count. I'm so delighted that you joined me today. I want to give a big thank you to those of you who are listening and a great big shout out to all of you listening around the world. I'm delighted and so grateful that you're here. I sure hope you're enjoying a fabulous day and that you're having a fantastic week because you know what? In the grand song of the universe, life is so short. It's short, sweet, and very precious. So I hope you're making a difference in your own life, because when you do, you also make a difference in somebody else's life. Now, a lot of us, a lot of us really want to make our life count for something, but we don't know how or how to begin. So folks ask me, Dr. Gloria, how do you make your life count? Well, it's very simple very simple. You make your life count day by day, step by step, moment by moment, every single day. 365, 24-7. Now, I'll say more about that later on. Right now, it's time to step back and listen in. That's right. It's time to hit the pause button. It's time for today's episode which is all about music and poetry. Now, I want you to imagine that we're in the same room. Maybe it's your living room or kitchen, and I'm sitting across the table from you. I'm pouring you a cup of tea or coffee, and we're about to have a a wonderful cup of what matters. So again, today's focus is all about the power of music and poetry. Music and poetry. Now, today's episode focuses on one of my favorite people on the planet. Her name is Joy Harjo. Her life is what Legacy Living Make Your Life Count is all about. Now, most of us know Miss Harjo as a a wonderful poet and musician and activist. Well, I know her as a poet and musician and activist extraordinaire. I also know Miss Joy as a smart, funny, and fiercely lit soul. For me, she expanded and amplified my understanding about the intertwined power of music and poetry. And she showed up in my life at a time where it made a difference for me. Now, I had the good fortune to meet Miss Joy Harjo many, many years ago when we were both featured poets at the Skagit River Poetry Festival. I recall that experience as though it happened just a few weeks ago. I remember seeing her take the stage in her black shirt and black jeans and black boots and turquoise earrings and turquoise beads around her neck. She had something else around her neck as well. And that was her axe, right? That was her saxophone. So when she took the stage, the first sound I heard were not the words of her poems, but the music of her soul, which is poetry too. I heard that music wailing from her saxophone. And I play saxophone too, so I'm thinking, wow, I've never heard poems come out of the saxophone like that before. (laughs) What I heard was the poetry and the music of earth and sky and rivers and streams in the voice of that saxophone. I heard Miss Harjo screaming love songs to the sun, and I heard her crooning nighttime memories to the moon. Oh, yes, I heard the music of poetry and the poetry of music, and they were like two lovers dancing like there's no tomorrow. There was no light. (laughs) There was no separation between them. It was in Miss Harjo's music that I learned about her poems, and in her poems that I learned about her music. And 
I understood that both were as necessary as air. Did you know that Miss Harjo is the first poet from Indian country to become poet laureate of the United States? Yeah, that's right. And she's the second poet, only the second poet, to hold that post for three consecutive terms. Now, Miss Joy has many, many worthy tributes, prizes, and accolades. But the best way to introduce this very special human being, this very special poet, is not by sharing her many, many accolades. The best way to introduce Joy Harjo is through her own words, through her own poetry, which is music, which is music, which is music. The first poem I'd like to share is called Remember. Remember. Remember the sky you were born under. Know each of the stars' stories. Remember the moon. Know who she is. I met her in a bar once in Iowa City. Remember the sun's birth at dawn. That is the strongest point of time. Remember sundown and the giving away to night. Remember your birth, how your mother struggled to give you form and breath. You are evidence of her life and her mother's and hers. Remember your father. He is your life also. Remember the earth whose skin you are. Red earth, black earth, yellow earth, white earth, brown earth. We are earth. Remember the plants, trees, animal life, who all have their tribes, their families, their histories, too. Talk to them. Listen to them. They are alive poems. Remember the wind. Remember her voice. She knows the origin of the universe. I heard her singing Kiowa War dance songs at the corner of Fourth and Central once. Remember, you are all people and that all people are you. Remember, you are this universe and that this universe is you. Remember, all is in motion, is growing, is you. Remember, all language comes from this. Remember the dance that language is, that life is. Remember. Mm. Remember. In this beautiful poem, Miss Joy distills so many lessons. Lessons perhaps she learned as a child. Lessons we would do well to refresh for ourselves. Lessons about the symbiotic relationship of human beings to all things, all essences, all presences, all prayers, all people. The music of the repeated word remember is a summons, a calling to us all to do just that. Remember. Remember. Here is that poem again. Remember. Remember the sky that you were born under. Know each of the stars' stories. Remember the moon. Know who she is. 
I met her in a bar once in Iowa City. Remember the sun's birth at dawn. That is the strongest point of time. Remember sundown and the giving away to night. Remember your birth, how your mother struggled to give you form and breath. You are evidence of her life and her mother's and hers. Remember your father. He is your life also. Remember the earth whose skin you are. Red earth, black earth, yellow earth, white earth, brown earth. We are earth. Remember the plants, trees, animal life, who all have their tribes, their families, their histories, too. Talk to them. Listen to them. They are alive poems. Remember the wind. Remember her voice. She knows the origin of the universe. I heard her singing Kiowa war dance songs at the corner of Fourth and Central once. Remember, you are all people and that all people are you. Remember that you are this universe and that this universe is you. Remember all is in motion, is growing, is you. Remember all language comes from this. Remember the dance that language is, that life is. Remember. Remember. Another one of my favorite poems by Miss Harjo is one of her more recent poems. This one is from her collection called Conflict Resolution for Holy Beings. I love the title of that book, don't you? <laughs> Conflict Resolution for Holy Beings. And the title of this next poem is called for calling the spirit back home from wandering the earth in its human feet. Yeah. For calling the spirit back home from wandering the earth in its human feet. Put down that bag of potato chips, that white bread, that bottle of pop, Turn off that cell phone, computer, and remote control. Open the door. Then close it behind you. Take a breath, offered by friendly winds. They travel the earth, gathering essences of plant to clean. Give it back with gratitude. If you sing, it will give your spirit lift to fly to the stars, ears, and back. Acknowledge this earth who has cared for you since you were a dream planting itself precisely within your parents' desire. Let your moccasin feet take you to the encampment of the guardians, who have known you before time, who will be there after time. They sit before the fire that has been there without time. Let the earth stabilize your post-colonial insecure jitters. Be respectful of the small insects, birds, and animal people who accompany you. Ask their forgiveness for the harm we humans have brought down upon them. Don't worry. The heart knows the way, 
though there may be high-rises, interstates, checkpoints, armed soldiers, massacres, wars, and those who will despise you because they despise themselves. The journey might take you a few hours, a day, a year, a few years, a hundred, a thousand, or even more. Watch your mind. Without training, it might run away and leave your heart for the immense human feast set by the thieves of time. Do not hold regrets. When you find your way to the circle, to the fire kept burning by the keepers of your soul, you will be welcomed. You must clean yourself with cedar, sage, or other healing plants. Cut the ties you have to failure and shame. Let go the pain you are holding in your mind, your shoulders, your heart, all the way to your feet. Let go the pain of your ancestors to make way for those who are heading in our direction. Ask for forgiveness. Call upon the help of those who love you. These helpers take many forms, animal, element, bird, angel, saint, stone, or ancestor. Call your spirit back. It may be caught in corners and creases of shame, judgment, and human abuse. You must call in a way that your spirit will want to return. Speak to it as you would to a beloved child. Welcome your spirit back from its wandering. It may return in pieces, in tatters. Gather them together. They will be happy to be found after being lost for so long. Your spirit will need to sleep a while after it is bathed and given clean clothes. Now you can have a party. (laughs) Invite everyone you know who loves you and supports you. Keep room for those who have no place else to go. Make a giveaway, and remember, keep the speeches short. Then you must do this. Help the next person find their way through the dark. Help the next person Find their way through the dark. In other words, be the difference who makes the difference in your own life and then in somebody else's life. I love this poem because it is just filled with the music of surrender, letting go, longing, the music is filled with poetry. The poetry of refreshment, renewal, remorse, and belonging. And once again, Miss Harjo reminds us that music and poetry, poetry and music, are absolutely inseparable. Now, If we're walking through a gallery and taking in a painting or a sculpture, we can pause and consider that painting or sculpture for a good long while. But the words of a poem, the notes of music, they just fly away. They fly away from us as soon after they land on our ear. Well, if you like hearing poems like I do, I encourage you to download my podcast so you can listen again and again. 
And if you'd like to hear poems read on the poet's own breath, you can go to any good poetry website and listen to a recording. For example, you can find audio and video recordings of Miss Harjo sharing some of her poems. How cool is that? So here are two more poems by Joy Harjo. These poems are also among my favorites. This first poem is called Grace. Grace. For Darlene Wind and James Welch. I think of wind and her wild ways the year we had nothing to lose and lost it anyway in the cursed country of the fox. We still talk about that winter, how the cold froze imaginary buffalo on the stuffed horizon of snowbanks, the haunting voices of the starved and mutilated broke fences crashed our thermostat dreams, and we couldn't stand it one more time. So once again we lost a winter in stubborn memory, walked through cheap apartment walls, skated through fields of ghosts into a town that never wanted us in the epic search for grace. Like coyote, like rabbit, we could not contain our terror and clowned our way through a season of false midnights. We had to swallow that town with laughter so it would go down easy as honey. And one morning, as the sun struggled to break ice, and our dreams had found us with coffee and pancakes in a truck stop along Highway 80, we found grace. I could say grace was a woman with time on her hands, or a white buffalo escaped from memory. But in that dingy light, it was a promise of balance. We once again understood the talk of animals, and spring was lean and hungry with the hope of children and corn. I would like to say with grace, we picked ourselves up and walked into the spring thaw. We didn't. The next season was worse. You went home to Leech Lake to work with the tribe, and I went south. And wind, I am still crazy. I know there is something larger than the memory of a dispossessed people. We have seen it. I know there is something larger than the memory of a dispossessed people. We have seen it. Grace. This next poem, this next poem is called Eagle Poem. Eagle poem. To pray, you open your whole self to sky, to earth, to sun, to moon, to one whole voice that is you. And know there is more that you can't see, can't hear, can't know, except in moments steadily growing and in languages that aren't always sound, but other circles of motion. Like eagle that Sunday morning over Salt River, circled in blue sky and wind, swept our hearts clean with sacred wings. We see you, see ourselves, and know that we must take the utmost care and kindness in all things. Breathe in, knowing we are made of 
all this and breathe knowing we are truly blessed because we were born and die soon within a true circle of motion, like eagle rounding out the morning inside us. We pray that it will be done in beauty, in beauty. Eagle poem. Here it is again. To pray you open your whole self to sky, to earth, to sun, to moon, to one whole voice that is you. And know there is more that you can't see, can't hear, can't know, except in moments steadily growing and in languages that aren't always sound but other circles of motion. Like eagle that Sunday morning over Salt River, circled in blue sky and wind, swept our hearts clean with sacred wings. We see you, see ourselves, and know that we must take the utmost care and kindness in all things. Breathe in, knowing we are made of all this. And breathe, knowing we are truly blessed because we were born. And die soon within a true circle of motion. Like eagle rounding out the morning inside us. We pray that it will be done in beauty, in beauty. Mm. Mm -hmm. Eagle poem. This poem... evokes memory, such deep memory, in my own soul. And I know I can hear the Holy Spirit whispering, be still, be still, take a minute, take a moment to savor the the beauty of the day. Maybe it's the way the sun beams down on the bright blue sea, or Maybe it's a passing, a passing moment that we pause so we can relish that exquisite glow of the evening sun just before it melts away into a bank of clouds or steams away into the silent sea. I love this poem for so many reasons. And again, I think the most significant reason is because it allows me, it helps me, it encourages me, invites me to slow down, (laughs) to just be still, to press pause, just for a moment, for a little while, to bathe in beauty, and to forget, to let go of the busy, busy, busyness of my life. The poem also invites me to remember to live in the music and poetry and sanctity of the world. How we live is how we do everything else, right? How we parent, how we teach, how we serve, how we lead in any aspect of our lives. To learn more about Joy Harjo and her life of writing and music and service, be sure to visit the Poetry Foundation website. And the website is www.poetryfoundation.org. Okay? Poetryfoundation.org. There you can read more about Miss Joy's life, you can read her poems, 
and even hear her read some of her own poems. You can also find information and inspiration on Miss Joy's website, and that's www.joyharjo.org. Okay, joyharjo.org, and you spell Harjo, H-A-R-J-O, joyharjo.org. Can I just tell you something? Miss Joy, we love you, (laughs) and we celebrate you. We lift you up during National Poetry Month, during Women's History Month, during Indigenous Peoples Month, and not only during those times, but we celebrate you every single day. (laughs) We celebrate you for looking into the wind, for looking into the wind, for standing in the wind, for allowing the wind to whirl through you. We celebrate you for looking into the face of memory, for being a vessel for the voices of your ancestors and those who are coming in our direction. We celebrate you for being a music maker and a poetry baker, (laughs) for your exquisite artistry and your amazing gifts of being awake to life and turning that life, the good, the gracious, the ugly, and the tragic into astonishing works of remembrance, of reverence, of restoration, of redemption. We salute you and celebrate you for your astounding artistry. We express our deep, deep gratitude, and we thank you for showing us the inseparable power of music and poetry, and what the power of one person, of one person who lives their life to make a difference, is all about, right? Now, that's exactly what we talked about earlier, and I promise to say more about how you can make your life count. So here we go. You can make your life count in so many ways. By being there for someone who simply needs the precious, wonderful fragrance of your presence. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, maybe that person just needs you to listen to them talk about their day, about how their dad is doing, or maybe they need to talk about their relationship with a friend or a daughter or son. And they don't want to just talk to anybody. (laughs) What they really need is you. Why? Because you listen with a smile in your heart. You listen without having to jump in and give advice. You listen because you really care. So you can make your life count in that kind of way. It really is that simple. And remember, how we live is how we serve. How we live is how we teach and parent. It's how we live and lead in any aspect of our lives. So let's remember to take good care of ourselves every single day, 365, 24-7. Now, if you missed any part of this week's podcast, you can listen to the recording at your convenience. You can even listen on the go. Now be sure to check us out at www.talknetworkradio.com forward slash hosts forward slash legacy living. Now that's a mouthful, so I'm going to say it again. Talknetworkradio.com forward slash hosts forward slash legacy living. Now, if you want to be the change you seek, be sure to listen to this podcast again and again, and be sure to tell somebody. You can also find me on iTunes, Alexa, Audible, SoundCloud, TuneIn, iHeart, Spreaker.com, and so many other places. You can learn more about my work and Legacy Living Make Your Life Count by visiting the Gloria Burgess website. That's right, that's me, <laughs> Gloria Burgess, and that's G L O R I A 
Burgess, B-U-R-G-E-S-S dot com. Now, as I've mentioned before, if you love to be inspired, you can subscribe to my inspirations right on my website. Just scroll down a little bit, look on the right sidebar until you see the place to add your email address to subscribe to my weekly inspirations. It's that simple. Each week, you will get a lovely, beautiful photograph and a short quotation that inspires you. Okay? You can also find me on LinkedIn or Facebook. And on Facebook, you can find me at facebook.com forward slash DR for Dr. DR Gloria Burgess, PhD. All right? Facebook.com forward slash DR Gloria Burgess, PhD forward slash. You can also hear and see me by visiting the TEDx website and listening to one of my TED Talks. Just type in my name and you can find me there. Now, before I close today, I want to thank each of you for being here, for allowing me to share a bit about my journey with what legacy living is all about. Not just living and learning, but living and learning and serving so that you make a difference in your own life and in the lives of others. It's about being on purpose every single day, 365, 24-7. Legacy living is one of the many powerful ways to make your life count. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria, Gloria Burgess, and this is Legacy Living, Make Your Life Count. Please join me again next time. And remember, don't just count the days in your life. Make the days in your life count. That's what Legacy Living is all about. Have a fantastic day. And remember, make the days in your life count. God bless. That's our show today. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria, Gloria Burgess. I hope you'll join me again next time. Until then, don't just count the days in your life. Make the days in your life count. That's what legacy living is all about. Here's to you. Have a fantastic day and be sure to make it a yes kind of day. Remember to celebrate the music of your life. Make the days in your life count.